Hi, I'm Todd Anderson. Hey, Tom Ross. And you're watching the Versus Series on StarCityGames.com. All right, so we're back from Houston and Philly. Yep. Where I suppose Tom played, in fact, we haven't really figured that out yet. I, I would just assume that. Yeah, I don't have anything better to play. I think it's still okay. I expect a lot of Eldrazi, which isn't going to be a great matchup, so I'll have to adjust a little bit for it. Yep. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to play yet in Houston, but today we're going to be playing some standard decks that we may have ended up playing. Uh, yeah, there, there aren't a lot of standard terms coming up, uh, you know, in the next few weeks, but uh, there were some cool things, I think, that were coming out of Houston. There was a lot of talk at the tournament uh, about green-white uh, hardened scales. Mm -hmm. uh, I think most of the face-to-face -face guys are going to end up playing that. That deck does seem pretty sweet. So uh, we're going to be playing that a little later on this week. But today we're going to be playing uh, a green-red ramp deck. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you're going to be playing? This red-black dragons, uh, similar to a deck I top forward uh, Columbus with. Uh, just some small changes. I got second in a PPTQ with the, the 75 here, so I'm trying to... To play, I don't think Ramp's a wonderful matchup. I'm kind of even with it, depending on their build. There's a, a whole, there's whole, all kind of different cards they can be playing in Ramp. Depends yes. what they want to do in the early turns. It's like it could be Jaddy Offshoot or Sylvan Advocate, but you choose to play some other guys. Yeah. So my version is uh, uh, played by Christopher O'Brien. He got second at the uh, uh, the Standard Classic in. Louisville, uh, what, last weekend or two weeks ago? Yeah, something like that. And uh, the deck just looked really solid on paper. And uh, it's something that Michael Majors has been looking at over the last couple weeks. If you've checked out any of his articles, uh, the Elvis Visionaries in the two-drop slot, no Kozilex return in the main deck, just leaving those in the sideboard for the matchups where you just need a sweeper. Uh, really just focusing on uh, hard-hitting creatures in the, the main deck. Uh, lots of Dragon Lord Tarkas, lots of World Breakers, couple uh, Ulamogs and a couple Ugins to, to clean up, but the deck looks pretty sweet on paper, and we're going to see how it plays out in real life. Yep. All right, let's get to the match. All right, we're going to play sevens game. See who goes first. Uh, first person roll seven loses. Uh, Eleven wins. If I roll a seven, you roll eleven, you get to be on the play first two games, and vice versa. Sounds fair. Mm. It's not that fair. Yeah, it's, it's, not. it's pretty brutal, but it, it hasn't happened yet, actually. It happened in uh, mine and Brad's videos twice. Oh, you got a seven? Ooh, I got a nine. Okay. I'll be on the play here. Pretty good for the uh, the ramp deck to be on the play. Ooh, this is not looking great. Well, if we draw two lands, we can play this Atarka on turn five. Eek. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's fast enough, though. I really want uh, something else. Plus, if he has a... Colgan's Command or something like that, then Hedron Archive is very vulnerable. I think I can do better. This is a little too too big on the start, so we're going to take a mull. That's a pretty average-looking hand for this deck. There's usually something missing. Uh, right now, it's like something to do in the, the bridging turns between something like turn two and three. Most hands will not be capable of casting a Colgan, so that's kind of something you have to deal with. Yeah, you got to get a couple of lucky draws in there or you know, to curve out. I think the uh, the ramp deck actually mulligans pretty well, so I'm looking forward to seeing what this six looks like. All right, well, this six is all mana, but I think that's fine for this deck. We just want to find, like, one or two big things at the uh, apex of the game, so we'll take a scry. We'll go bottom this land and just try to dig for something big. Let's take a... Mm, go. I don't think this is going to survive, but... It's we'll not. See. It's going to eat a fire impulse. <laughs> I'll go fetch from Mountain no matter what. We could have morphed it on three so he had to spend a different turn trying to kill it. Might have been a little bit better. There are a ton of lands that could be in trouble. All right, All right trouble. <laughs> go. Okay, well, still need a big thing. Well, Pilgrimage, go get two forests, one in play, one in hands. Let's go get a... Uh, Smolder Marsh. Standard, the shuffling. This is a key turn. I really need something. All right, so you're at 18. I'm at 20. All right, cut me into something. I'll cut myself. All right. Right to Ugin. Ooh, something. It might have been one of the, the better somethings. All right. Whack. All right, 18 all. Yeah. Cool thing about Shrine is that Along with explosive vegetation, it just ramps you right up 
to all your big stuff immediately, which is great. And we could play Visionary this turn, but I think I'm just going to play Explosive because next turn I can play just about anything. If you draw it? If I draw it. And I can probably play the Elvish Visionary and still play something if I draw it. We're going to get the second mount here off of the Explosive Vegetation just so I can potentially uh, cast a Chandra if I draw it. All right. 16. Got you to a bad one. All right. Ugin here will be tight. Yeah, I'm dead to most any spell. You can conjure up. <laughs> what about Elvish Visionary? What about I'll take that. this is Pilgrimage? All right, we'll draw. Whoop. Brick, 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 brick. I did brick. Yes. So we'll just veggies again. Cool. I'm going to kill you. Am I dead this turn? Sure. Go. <laughs> oh, man. That stinks. I got you attacking for 16. That's okay. There's two triggers of this. <laughs> So 6, 12, and this is a 4, so that's Xaxes. Yep. All right, good game. <laughs> Glad that worked. I had nothing else. <laughs> All right, here for game two. Uh, hand looks pretty solid, although we have a, a, the opposite problem of last hand, where instead of all mana, we have a bunch of big stuff, but a little bit of mana. So uh, if our Rhino Claw dies, that's going to be bad, but we just need to draw a couple lands, and I think we'll be okay. Yeah, Mulligan 6. It's okay. I, I don't know exactly what I need. need lands and spells, actually. Gonna mull or... This is one of the spells I'm for sure I don't need. Alright. Um, yeah, I wanna... That's actually pretty good. I can dress now. No. I'll turn on, <laughs> turn on stuff and things. Alright, get that vegetation. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah. Oh man, I'm dead. <laughs> so I think we actually just need to morph Rattle Claw next turn. We did draw a land. Um, does that even do anything? Let's see. So on turn four, if I draw a land, uh, there we go. Okay. What was your other card with it? Do I know? Uh, you know. I don't. I don't know what you just drew. Okay. Good enough for me. Uh, yep. Alright, play morph. Okay. I'm not, I'm killing it with a cut. Alright. The duress was key because it allowed me to cut on turn two. Yeah, it's pretty good. I think I'm just boned. B O N T boned. <laughs> what am I at? Uh, you're at 18, yeah. I'm mm, still at 20. the worst possible. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, go. So we need a vegetation right now? Get this my my board state cleaned up. Is this what? Go ahead. This like never happens when I play against Ram. <laughs> I just always have the nuts. Yeah. It might have time. Okay. It might not. We'll see. Seventeen. Go. Okay. We need a we need a thing. All right. That was a thing. Shoot. Yep. All right. Uh. So this comes in tap from that. I'll put this in my hand and I'll play it. I'll say go. Dang. Uh, well. Oh no, that's a lot. Four, I'm at 13. Yeah, go. Four breaker might be doing some good. Let me read this. All right, we'll fetch. Okay. So I'm at 12. Get us a cinder glod. So I can Ugin tick up on a Pia. And he doesn't have a backup Pia or else he would have cast it. He can hit me for four, but if he draws a uh, a land, he could dash Colgon and maybe just kill me. So I think I'll just play this instead. Okay. Uh, so we'll do uh, two and then one, one, one. Might be a little dangerous to leave him with Thopter Engineer since give things haste, but I think we'll be able to clean up most stuff next turn. So this is Pilgrimage and Hill Missing a Land Drop were pretty key. Hmm. Alright. I'll take two. Go. I'm at ten. Yep. Funny thing about 
Hangerback Walker is that it is an artifact. That's why I attacked. Whack. <laughs> <laughs> Go. Uh, with my 10 or so. Yep. That's what I got. 5 7, huh? 5 7 will reach. Grasp of Darkness plus Draconic War does kill him. <laughs> okay. I'm at 8. 10. I'm going to go. Uh, attack. 2. Lightning Bolt you. Alright. I know this looks like only 7, but Shrine is great. I also drew the land. All right, we're here for sideboarding. He's a ramp deck, so I'm taking out uh, most of my removal spells. I think Draconic Core will be enough, and Murder's Cut stays in because it kills the bigger stuff like Worldbreaker and Dragon Lord Tarka. I got into the habit of taking out a Kologon against most matchups. They tend to have some way to uh, deal with the dash Kologon after post. Sideboard, it could be either Transgress the Mind, Disdainful Stroke. In this case, it's Plummets, or in another case, it might just be more removal spells. Um, Kologon's command comes in. I think being on the play, I could still shock a Rattleclaw Mystic even though he's taking it out. and um, if I see Radical Mystic, I might even assume Hedra's Archive. He is, in fact, playing with it. Mm -hmm. And it's good against that card for the Shatter effect. And then Transgressor the Mind is the reason to have so many Transgressor Minds on sideboard to either pick apart his ramp spells like Nessus Pilgrimage and Explosive Vegetation or to take his, you know, big cards, Ugin's or Dragon Lord Tark or whatever half he is strict on. Yep. All right, my side. Uh... Oath of Nyssa is a little bit worse. I could maybe cut uh, one more Oath of Nyssa for something. I don't actually know what. But uh, since we're cutting six targets for it, and uh, Oath of Nyssa is usually just there to smooth out your draws in the early game, but also to like find your big stuff, um, we're just going to trim one since we're cutting six and only bringing in one card. I don't want to brick on it. I don't know if it's likely, but we do have a lot of spells in our deck now that we're bringing in Plummet and Kozilek's Return. Uh, the third Chandra is a little bit better than Ugin, I think, just because it's cheaper and um, it can get rid of all of his uh, Thopter tokens from Pia and Karen Nalar and things like that. So we're just going to be trying to play a bit of, more of a control game against him, and I'm pretty sure we're just going to try to stop him from beating us down too badly. We're here for game three. I'm on the play. We're currently 1-1. One, one. I have a hand that applies some pressure, and I don't know when I'm going to cast this Karen's Rest of Mine. Probably turn two. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, uh, my side, if we're going to transgress, uh, is going to be pretty bad. We probably want to Cinderglade on one and Forest, uh, or sorry, and then play Oath of Ness on two, just in case we want to fetch out a second red source on two. Like, I don't know exactly when we'll have time. It might not matter at all. Whatever. I'm going to keep it, though. And Oath of Ness is not necessary to cast on turn one, I don't think. It might... If we had drawn an Elvish Visionary, but yeah, eh, still maybe better. Eh, whatever. Uh, play an oath. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> go. All right, I'm not gonna fetch here. I don't mind drawing one land. I'm gonna go ahead and get the combo of Swamp Mountain. That looks like the one to get, yeah. Chandra could be Turtle Thumb, as could World Breaker. Can I beat one, but not the other? Let me look at my hand. Pretty much can't beat either. Yeah, Pilgrim is just going to give me some trouble. Yeah. yeah. I could see that. That card is particularly good in this deck. Um against like attrition heavy discard decks and stuff. You just want to make sure you hit all your land drops. Dang. To be lands. Alright, 17, 19. Yep. Go. Whoop. Go. About to attack him this turn. With a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> um I don't think I'm well, there's nothing too scary you can play next turn, so go ahead and get my fetch on. 16. I'm winning. Not really winning. If you have, if you have a call against man, I'm just 100% dead. Whoa. 
<laughs> All right, so four, I'm at 15. Yep, one I'm at 16. Okay. Yep. Not one anymore. All right, go. Let's see what I need to. Look at this. How many unknowns you got? I got Warbreaker, Chandra, and I think that's all you know, but I'm not positive. I think it is too. I think, no, I had two archives, right? Yep, I got this. Because I drew a land and these two cards. Yeah, I'm going to destroy your archive, make you discard. That's bad. Um. Might not be correct, but 15. another thing. How do you have so many things? I want to make him discard forecast, transgress the mind. <laughs> no. Uh. Yep. Sure. Land. Do I even mess with the mana at this point? I don't know. Maybe. He still draws you two eventually as well. In any case, you can cast your big thing next turn. Or the turn after. Uh, oh, well, yeah, get the Hedron Karkov. All right. Whoops. Sorry. Hopefully, that was the right choice. Then I'm done. What do we need? Go. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Six, seven, I'm at eight. No way. Two, Wait, three, you're four, 11 last six. turn. Oh, I'm I didn't four. take the four last turn, so I'm at four? Yeah, go ahead. I don't think I have an out. I don't think you do either. It's under minus three, don't do it. <laughs> Nah, I drew Kozilek's return, which is almost out <laughs> <laughs> for a turn. If you didn't have the six land for the three three hanger back, I'm at four. Yeah, uh, these will beat you, even if you upkeep the Kozilek return. Yeah, I'm dead. All right, I'm on the play here for game four, and my hand is actually pretty good, even though we took a mulligan. Uh, we definitely just want to look for a ramp spell, but we're gonna keep and take a scry. Yeah, and I'm mulligan the six as well. I need a land or maybe a discard spell. I think I actually want a ramp card and not a land, so we're going to bottom that. Yeah, I'm going to keep it. Maybe a little risky, but... All right, I'm going to Oath, I guess. Take a Shrine, I think. Maybe I should take a Chandra instead. I think I just need a Shrine. Okay. It's probably a mistake. Maybe it was a mistake to bottom that. This duress is probably land. the only card I would keep on top that's not a a land. I missed. All right, good. Brick city. All right, I'll draw a card and pass a turn, and then I'll reevaluate. Mm, yeah, go. Tight. Should have bottomed, I suppose. Took. I'm going to go to 19, fetch a mountain, and then pilgrimage. So the pilgrimage is going to put a force into play, the and a force into my hand, and then the wood of foothills will get a mountain. Shortcuts. Okay. Take my turn. Yep. Yay. Okay. All right. <laughs> you don't sound too enthusiastic too about what's going on over there. Yeah, at least more marsh in my deck. I don't need triple black. <laughs> All right. Uh, 18 me. You're at 18 also. True. Uh, Two yeah, fetches in a, a battle. You're right. You got beat on. Yep. All right. Do it again. Oh, why is this in the graveyard? Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> All right, play it, go. Y 
You better have like three transgressors this turn. Or you dead. Dead? Not dead, but dead ish. Okay. There are things that I wish. Yeah, whatever. Trump block. Okay. 17. Not sure if that's right, but feels right. I'll probably get plummeted on. Who cares, go? Nah. Just Tarkid. Or World Record. Jeez. I got so many options. Yeah, I'll kill your smoldering marsh. Here you go. I guess technically I can leave this untapped because of the shrine. Dang. Wish I had another mana at the end of that last turn. What if I just attack you with Doctor Engineer and Token? Probably won't work. Alright, cut your card. Cut my card? Take six, I'm at 11? Yep, go. Hmm. All right, Killing Mountain. Go. Don't really want to fetch with his foothills if I don't have to, so I'm just going to leave it uncracked for a bit. It's possible I should cut you off double black, but I don't think it matters that much. Attack for three, put you at eight. Ooh, it's uh, raining. Uh-oh. I go D's. All right. I'll block uh, Doctor Engineer. Okay. Suppose. Your turn. So go to nine. Yep. All right. So, uh, Tarka D's. And I'll whack you. D12. Go. Twelve. Uh oh. Go. So we can get back Worldbreaker and cast it, or we can just go for the kill. I think it's playing it a little safer if we just attack. There's a small chance that he, if we go uh, plummet, we go to six. And then he could go like cut Draconic Roar in response, and then untap a Draconic Roars and kill us. I think that's the only way we can actually die. All right, we'll do that. Uh, block. Okay, you take eight, you're four. Four. Um, so we can go to seven and cast Warbreaker on his red, so we'll just do that, I think. So go seven. Um, sack of lands, get back Warbreaker. Kill your smoldering marsh. I'm, uh, I'm do 2D and bring back Thopter Engineer. All right. Uh, so go to five. five. Yep. Dang. Four? Hmm. You are at four. Okay, I'm dead. <laughs> All right, here for game five. We'll tie 2-2 two -two if I recall. Oh, yeah, I got to keep one. Todd's on six. We'll talk to you about it. Yep, mine is definitely keepable on six. We mold a uh, six lander and explosive vegetation for this. Uh, if we get our pilgrimage to rest or uh, transgressed, that could be bad for us. I think we actually just want to bottom this because we really just want to hit uh, another actual ramp spell. 
or a big thing would be fine too. So we'll we'll bottom that, even though it is good. Let's get smoldering Martian path. Okay, nineteen. Um, actually, I'll say go. Go ahead and get a green red, nineteen all. All right. Oh boy, the rain's coming down. I don't know if y'all can hear it on the video, but it is loud. It's like a bunch of bees. I don't think I'll play my next fetch just yet. Kind of do want to throw a land. A little anti thinning here. Uh, if. Guess I gotta take that pilgrimage. Womp, 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 womp. Go. Alright, we'll draw. Go. Not sure how I feel about Visionary in the deck just yet. I think it. In this matchup, or any sort of removal heavy matchup in general, it is probably a bit better than like Whisper of the Wilds or anything like that. Gotta get him dead, but it's gonna be kind of tough. All right, uh, seventeen. Go. You get. Attack. Oh. Go. Seventeen, everybody. 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 Yeah, I guess Thunderbreak's weakish to plummet, but what can you do? I don't know. I didn't have plummet two turns ago. True. Don't have it now. <laughs> Just dead. So I miss 16 and you're at 15 after I attack you. Yep. I'm done. All right. Well, I feel like just gonna lose in like two seconds to a Colgan's command. Probably. So go. Probably? No, don't do that to me. Don't you only have like two Colgan's commands in your deck? True. Just gotta know what my other mode's gonna be. Probably sitting. <laughs> uh, I guess it's shocking you. Yeah, yep. shock you. If you take a total of eight that turn, go to seven life. I'm at seven. All right. This is not great. I'm done. This is not great. I think I'm just going to be dead. All right. Uh, so... Two damage. Go to 14. i to figure out if there's some weird thing I can do. I guess I could draw Chandra. It's not a huge difference between one life and three life. So I'm just going to veggies... Say so go, You'd probably be dead. Oh yeah, you died. The top range in your token. <laughs> <laughs> Off that I just drew. <laughs> yeah, I had this I could have cast, but uh, I don't think it would have mattered. But all right, you win. Good beat. All right, so one of the reasons that I think uh, Black Red Dragons is good right now is because it has so many flying creatures. Yeah. Uh, you know, there there are a lot of ways to gum up the ground in the format. All the Collected Company decks just try to put stuff like Deathmatch Raptor or Reflector Mage into play and just keep you from attacking. So anything that can go to the skies right now, I think it just has a ton of value. And I think Black Red Dragons just kind of like pushes that envelope, mostly because of Dragon Lord Colagon. Yeah, uh, all the dragons are good. The Thunder Breaks and the Colagons. Um, you had... Uh, Hanging back Walker before too, uh, so four of them in the deck. Uh, Flame White Phoenix, even the Thopter Engineers bring extra flying tokens that chip damage them out and it has a good body to block with as well. Like most of the things in the format are like two power, things like Zergo, Reflector Mage, don't get through the Thopter Engineer, so it blocks really well. Um, your deck actually had a significant number of flying creatures once you got going with uh, like Worldbreaker. I mean, not flying, but a things target that, Things that can block flyers, yeah. Like, I think there might have been a situation where if Warbreaker didn't have reach, and I might could come across oh, the finish sure. line barely. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, Warbreaker, I think, without Reach, I think, uh, may be a little less good just because, you you know, he almost always makes sure that you get to take care of, you know, either a land or problematic, you know, artifact or enchantment. Or, is it enchantment? I don't remember. But, and then also just make sure you can block any sort of big follow-up flyer. I mean, the fact that it can stop uh, Dragonlord Ojutai is pretty huge, I think, and one of the reasons why I think Ramp is actually favored against Esper Dragons now, mm -hmm. whereas before it was uh, heavily unfavored. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Ramp does have trouble with decks that can hit you really hard, really fast, uh, especially the ones that have Disruption. I think Tom's deck is built in a really nice way to complement both sides. You know, he didn't even have, like, significantly great draws against me, and he still beat me. So I think that's definitely something to look at. Yeah, just one discard spell did it. It might have done it even game four uh, if the rest would hit, like, any, any spell. Kind of just won by one spell, and I kind of lost by, like... One spell, too. Yeah. Like, if I had a, a land drop a little bit earlier or something, if I bought him dress and didn't miss, it could have been different. Yeah, uh, I think uh, the it's possible that I shouldn't have sided out Rattle Claw after sideboard just because there's a chance that, you know, the Black Red Dragons decks just side out a bunch of their removal, like Tom did. And uh, it would have maybe helped me jumpstart my my uh, my draws in the early game to, to actually keep up with his big dragons and stuff. So definitely keep an eye out for maybe trying that out if you're having trouble with Black Red Dragons. But in general, I think it's kind of a bad matchup. You know, we, we didn't draw a plummet. Uh, Kozilek's Return was still a little awkward, you know, because you do have uh, Thopter Engineer and, you know, Thunderbreak Regent, so it doesn't do a ton. And, um, you know, your, your goal really is to just try to f play a big thing as, as quickly as possible. And even if they kill their, your Radical Mystic, then they're having to take off their turn to do it. So maybe it's more important that you just put them under that pressure as opposed to uh, just, like, letting them kind of free roll you and play all their creatures out. So. Yeah, I think the matchup's close. I've... I'm 50-50 in matches and games against it. I'm like 8-8 eight eight in games. But, yeah, it's usually somebody, either the steam rolls the other person, either they, the ramp person develops fast enough before I can disrupt them and kill them with the flyers or uh, get them before they get off the ground. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be all for me and Tom today. Make sure to check out the website uh, over the next week or so to check out some more standard videos with some, some fresh brews hot off the presses. <laughs> I think the green-white hardened scales deck might be one of my favorites. Uh, Brad's going to be playing that against me on Friday, I believe, so make sure you tune into that. I'm going to be playing a mono-blue Eldrazi aggro deck. Uh, Mike Segrist wrote about it last week in his article, and uh, it's been cropping up on Magic Online here and there. I think uh, it really just spotlights on how good the card Whirler Rogue is. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's, it's probably better than PN Kieran Alar, like pound for pound. Yeah, I mean, as long as you have like a big creature to, uh, to target with uh, her ability, or uh, I guess Whirler Rogue's a girl. Yeah, uh then, you know, her ability is just phenomenal, you know? When you have Reality Smasher, just a, a, even just a creature with a Ghostfire Blade on it, you know? Tap the Ghostfire Blade to give them block will do. Yeah, yeah, I've done that a few times so far. It's been pretty sweet. Anyway, all right, guys. Well, uh, there's no SEG Tour this week, uh, but next weekend we are going to be at uh, Grand Prix Washington, D.C., for the Team Sealed event hosted by Star City Games. It's going to be an awesome time. Make sure to tune in our videos. Next week we're going to be doing a lot of team building uh, I want to say team building exercises, but that doesn't that's not really what we're doing. We're yeah, team we deck building exercises. Figured out the logistics of it yet, but should be a good show though. Yeah, Look we're going to we're going to have uh, pools uh probably a couple times during the week and we're just going to try to build sealed decks out of it and then we'll probably compare, maybe even battle some. I'm not sure exactly what we're doing yet. So, should be fun if if you're planning on going to or watching uh Grand Prix DC, uh make sure to check out our videos next week and uh I guess that's it. Yeah, that's it. All right guys, thanks for watching. Uh, the Versus Series on StarCityGames.com. For Tom Ross, I'm Todd Anderson. Have a good one. See you.